whether you are a new player playing in legacy servers like myself on infra servers or an old player in a new world you're probably wondering what's what good way of making money i think my new world is different ways of making money different ways of leveling your gear score different ways of interacting with the game and it's one of the best things so this is not probably the best way to make money or the most profitable but this one that i've been having fun it's more relaxing and doesn't involve the Ponzo scheme that is level 2 and the furniture. No! No! And obviously, as my outfit reveals, is motherfucking cooking. Okay, it's motherfucking cooking. Now, the good thing is that you can either put out in the market a lot of uh, cheaper products that have ingredients that are not very expensive and people use every day a lot, or you can go to the super high tier buff that made your service not even demanding yet, but you just plan ahead and and get the ingredients for those super high-end products so when the wells have the need for them you can you can profit out of that and obviously everything in between or you can do everything so even within within cooking even within cooking in this game there's a lot of possibilities okay i'm gonna try to go a bit around all of them you can see there's a lot of receipts here but obviously you're gonna make any money making this type of products regular foods uh, it's pretty basic the component ingredients are going to be important, obviously, for example, fish sauce, cooking oil, season blend, you're going to be using them in your day to day. The others mostly just good for leveling. Okay, so what we can do is add a filter, go to tier 5, and go directly to the money making products. I guess we're going to start one by one with the trade skill foods, okay? People demand a bit more, perhaps, compared to the high end buff uh, products something that people demand more because they need to craft their things they need to harvest their things and obviously and products are not as expensive or not as hard to get so for example you have the one that is harvesting i found that the best ones the mining one of the products the mining is the oregano it's hard to get it's very annoying to get and it's expensive the salt is also expensive so while the money in luck is demanded because it's a bit more expensive i don't see it being that demand in my server but obviously you're gonna be to adapt to what your server demands the way of getting salt is as, is as follows i don't like doing salt runs because honestly it's something you can buy it can be a bit expensive I mean, depending on your server if it's a bit expensive maybe do it but yeah it's better things to do honestly but yeah go to brightwood this is the route i do okay you need to value what's more expensive how the prices are fluctuating and just focus on what can make you save more money then you won't be able to farm everything so you need to make your choices and honestly that that's super dependent on how the server economy is going people are going to start farming people see these prices of, of different products are going up they're going to go farm that and maybe after that the prices go down so they go move to another thing and so on right this is how economic works in general so yeah at the end it's gonna depend how the price is fluctuating and you focus on what you think that you like to do most or it's more efficient or saves you more money and so on you know bro provision crates i know you you spot but they look different right and the ones in blightwood don't really look like provision there's some bread over there but they don't really look like provision crates okay. so at the first it's a bit hard to spot but you know just doing one run and and you'll get used to it Obviously, as you can see, this is an elite area, but it's not a big deal. There's some interesting missions in Blackwood for the faction. Also, this is an elite area, as you can see. For me, while doing this, you can, for example, level your weapon and whatnot. Also, try to do multiple things at the same time, if possible, right?
uh, you know, musket ball probably not the best thing to do this anyway. How much salt we got so far? Zero. Zero salt. Well, that's just, you know, that's just me. Just, you know. You guys should get a bit luckier, honestly. This thing is also good for Arcana, the Bullrus. And do Rene. Get Regen. You can do Regen potions with them. Another one here on the corner. Once you do once, it's not a long run, so once you do the once, you'll be fine. I think I got any salt yet, but I swear there is salt, okay? I swear there is some salt around. I found this, this to be the best. The best one for this. There's all the runs, obviously, like. Materials are dependent that you get for provisions are dependent on the area, but I'm just gonna get this supply, but obviously not needed. Only one is that other the provision chest. Whereas the oregano, for example, you can find in, in this area over here and over here. But it's hard to get and no, most of the time it's just buy and try to resell the product. But again, it's, I don't think it's having that much demand because it's a bit more expensive and more annoying. Also, the squash use it for, for the products, even that the squash is not that hard to get. You have the spicy stick pie, super cheap, super demanded. Savory fish cake. The only problem is the, the fish fillet. String beans and rosemary is not super cheap, but you can you can buy in the actual honey. It's a bit expensive. It still can allow you to sell this product. See, Ipkini is going to be part of, of your harvesting if you want to make more profit as a cook. Garlic, for example, you can get it in with the herbs in Imristone Sarts. And the carrots, you can find them farm in Windsor, in Everfall, in, in First Life. But I'm going to show you a spot later on for another product. So we're going to gather other type of products. But the carrot is just there too, conveniently. So you're gonna see like uh, where I find it. Logging on the other hand is super cheap. I think it's one of the the ones that people like more. So I'm mostly focusing on these three. But again, you need to you need to rely on what your server demands and adapt to it. Farm in advance as you see that something's been demanded more. And move towards the next product that I think people are gonna keep demanding. Now we jump to the ones that are like the crafting buff compared to the harvesting ones. I, I haven't even done this one. Why? Because the cauliflower is super demanding. The oregano is expensive too. So if someone orders this to me, I'll make it. But so far, like, I'm not making it because it's, it's just value these products a lot. The oregano and the cauliflower on top. On, on, on top. Also has carrot that is a bit annoying to get. Like, super annoying to grab this. Now, as is people demand it, I don't mind. Like, one of the things that you can do as you want to you wanna profit with cooking is block building yourself a clientele building yourself like hey i cook i'll make it cheap for you whether it's guildies friends or random people in your server you can try to make them understand that you're gonna make it a bit cheaper for them and it's gonna be worth it and get orders that it's gonna be benefit for you because you don't have to wait in auction house for sale it's a secure sale so it's better for you but yeah this one also weapon smith is not that many people doing it so far so it's mostly engineering and armoring what I've been doing. I found that uh, armoring has a lot of demand, the space cabbage soup, at least in my server. And it's selling very well and very good money. Look at that, it's bought oregano for 700. We we'll jump to the buying orders later on. Okay, because it's very important for cooking, I will say. But let's go for the money makers, okay? The actual stat buff. Now, you have, for example, the new one, Gremolata Terranir. This is a bait. I've been selling them and making money with this sometimes. Okay. But this is best. This is way better because it's way cheaper. It's 40 minutes versus 60 minutes. The rabbit uh, with season veggies versus the, the Thunderlane. But the main, the main difference is this has fucking fish sauce that is annoying to get. All right. And you might know already. To make fish sauce, you need uh, 
fish row need to be fishing it's very annoying it's very low chance it's only two fishes that give it i want to tell you later on how what's the best way of getting it but i don't think it's worth using this fish row or this product well you have the alternative that more people will start demanding even if people buy this eventually they want to realize that this is just better and it's basically my the best product i have the best i've been selling is my money maker okay for the constitution everyone doing pv wants it a lot of people doing pv wants it it's good for words it's good for expeditions it's good for everything so that's why people the money a lot and you need to be ahead of that so what's the main components of this you have the oregano without where it, where you got it but you can buy it but you saw me getting the buy order it's something you you can just buy on the action house now i'll tell you where to get the cauliflower I also get in this area broccoli, squash, and carrots, so it's very convenient. For the cauliflower, it's going to travel to first light. But before getting the actual cauliflower, okay, we're going to visit this farm because it's kind of relevant too for the receipts in general, and also for this one. Because we have some carrots over here. Here, there. Oh, look at that. Ruffle bones. Hey, as well, I thought this was going to be a cooking video, and it's going to end up being a rough, ruffle bones video. But you have uh, the carrots over there, over there too, and some more over here. The, you, you cannot really miss them, right? About ruffle bones, what can I say? Uh, some monster that appears around and drops good gear. It's like a goblin in the other three, so to speak, okay? Without going much into detail, I guess I have to explain enough that it's so in this in this video. In any case, the main resource is only the flowers. So besides the the carrots, this this is why this place is super good. Yeah, broccoli guys, insane amounts of them, insane amounts of them. So this place is great. Also. Besides all that, if that's not enough for you, and you know, all the harvesting you can do uh, around here too for modes, you have motherfucking squares too, okay? It's just, uh oh, this is paradise. But we didn't come here for only the squares, the carrots and that, right? Wait, there is more? Yes, there is more. There's more squares there. And there is more to this, like, we travel here for the cauliflower, so I want to start over here, okay? No wonder why I'm dressed as a, as a chef right now. Well, don't worry about it, guys. It's not. It's not important. Okay. It's not important. The important thing is the cauliflower. First cauliflower will be up there. Oh. Now, obviously, it's not warranted. The cauliflowers are fun on first leg, all across first leg, and any provisions. And you need to, you know, just be lucky, hashtag somewhat lucky. And these runs, you can do one every one hour, like the, the, the chest respawn, not respawn because they're always there, right? But refresh after one hour. You know, the little ones is once a day, but this, don't worry, it's once an hour. So the idea is that while well, there is other areas where you can find the the cauliflowers and some other runs this one is i find it is so efficient i prefer doing this and then do something else and then maybe come back later instead of just focus on doing only cauliflower because with cooking you're gonna need to gather a lot of materials you want to save some money it's better to get it easy and get you know some cauliflowers here some there do a run here, then don't do any run for two days, then do another one. Maybe sometimes buy in the market if it's cheap, rather than just focusing just to cauliflowers over and over and over again. Like you do with other gathering, like we do other with other professions, right? You want mining, you know, do you do your mining route, finish it, start over, repeat, right, all the time. I find like with cooking, you can take it a bit more easy and a bit chill, and that's why I like cooking too, is because. You don't, you need to only focus on that, right? On one route, on one 
No, you can just go around and get the this material, then go travel to another place, get this other material, make the receipt, chill for a bit until you either buy more or or the stars are fresh or you know until they buy out because cooking is a bit slower and even if you put the lowest price sometimes it doesn't sell it's not like uh, mining nodes where you get the mineral and you put the lowest price it's gonna sell it's always gonna be a demand cooking is a bit slower but it's good money just that it's only that I like it because it's a bit more chill and and you need to do multiple things you need to mold it gather multiple stuff and even if it's the same thing because after all you're gathering stuff uh, it feels different right so that's why I like it And up there this we'll find the last one up here on the wall there are other places but i was saying i prefer doing this and then going back to killing rabbits or do whatever or armadillos or whatever i need or do some fishing right that just do multiple other provision runs provision says give uh, the materials based on where you are in, in the area, right? In first light, you're gonna have cauliflower in all the provision chests. It's another area around here. And then in morning nail, you're gonna have the provision chest too. You can go here, there's some uh, star metal here, there is some arcana materials to make the top path here, and you get provisions in these houses. You can provisions here too, another one and another one. And you can go down, you get another one here in where the boss is, another one in the caves, another one there. So this alternative is why I prefer just going back to do something else because this is the most efficient I found and the fastest. So when one hour later, two hours later, three hours later, I come back again rather than just going to another area that is less efficient. Now for Sumtun's Rabbit, I found a very good place. So let's check it out. Sumtun's Rabbit, you can get obviously, you know, from rabbits, obvious. And I found the best place to find rabbits. It's really water, you want the skin in here, you want the buff for skinning, you want the trophies obviously. And the good thing about the red water up in this area, like looks like a canyon, is the, the concentration overall of, of, of rabbits. You can permanently go around this area, make it a circle, uh, and not running out of rabbits. Those elite ones are fairly good, you are farming also the top at gypsum because they're very likely to drop the the gypsum since they are elites and you have also buffaloes and wolves and you want big hat as you can see in in this playthrough like the amount of rabbits that are is, is insane you you never go out of them no. you never run out of rabbits to kill and, and a skin and, and that sounds very terrible but such is life right such is life and 
Therefore, this is the best area. Normally, you go teleport over here and just jump around, and you're already there. It's pretty easy. There are other places, obviously. Like, we have places like uh, Morningdale around this area. Where there are also bears where uh, you can find also a lot of rabbits. Another one, if you want, in a starting area is um, Windsward in this like type of uh, island. You just go around the island and you're gonna get rabbits. But the concentration there is in this place, uh, I've been trying to find the best place for rabbits. The concentration there is in this place is just, yes, on match. And you wanna do more in the is maybe because of you wanna farm the bears too, or you wanna do some fishing. And in Windsward, the reason will be to get the tier one high, the raw high, uh, because there are bites on them that drop it too. But in terms of concentration, there is there's no better place than this one. Now, the thing about recipes and products, right, ingredients, is that, as you saw before, that we bought the oregano, you can set the buying prices, you can set buying orders, because this is going to be one of the most demanded recipes you can make. Take in mind that, for example, if the Sumptuous Rabbits cost 90 a piece, with the cooking set, with the trophies, okay, obviously for cooking when I need all these trophies, that honestly, the cooking trophies... It's not even expensive, so it's pretty convenient. Every time you get, for example, you get a ride for 90 and you craft one, chances are that you are going to multiply that by two, right? Therefore, the rabbit is not costing you 90, it's costing you 45. Normally, when you are buying a product, you need to, okay, divide it by half. If I that 45, if I that the tarragon, that is also half, and maybe the meal, even though that, you know, you can get meal very easily in towns how much is costing me its problem how much i'm selling it for right the thing about cauliflower is going to be super expensive so just farming this the place i told you or you know find your own your own area the bro the cauliflower is not going to be worth uh, buying on the auction house but for example for the rabbit that is the main ingredient is what you're gonna really need you can just set buying orders okay you go to the market you you type the product you want you place a buy order and obviously when you're selling, you want to be the lowest, so normally, right, unless you have a lot of quantity and whatnot, depending on the product, you want to be the lowest, so one guy that comes to buy it, buys instantly, for the buying order, on the other hand, obviously you want to be the higher. I think this is me, 83, 20, so active orders, buy orders, yeah, 20, so you see I'm getting, trying to get some fish road too, it's super cheap here, so I don't think I'll get it, but yeah, just in case. So you said the rabbit, normally with cooking, you want to do sales that last one day, not only for the tax cost, because, but because in cooking, it's a lot of paintings and a lot of adapting to the market, and a lot being there that day. So obviously you don't play, you don't play every day. You can just put up, buy an order for three days or sell some products for three days. It's fine. But really you need to be adapting. It's more about adapting to the market than actually be farming all day, every day. Okay. So with cooking, you wanna place those one day orders. You're trying to play the to place the the buying order. The most expensive you can, but without you know losing profit off of it, obviously. This will be 83, it will be 45, 46.5, 46.6 will cost you just the rabbit. So you need to okay, just the rabbit with the time and best for the cauliflowers. Plus, I need to buy this species. Okay, do I do, can I sell it for 94 and make a profit, for example, right? You need to value all that. But yeah, buying orders is just OP because you're gonna have so much demand, particularly for this special, for this particular product. You're gonna need to buy here, sell there, move your move yourself in the market to really to refulfill that demand and to really make a profit with cooking. The good thing about cooking for me is that you don't know, spend three hours nodding and my notes or login that is something that you might like it's more about get this product here move to another area get this other small product here okay you have more there's some products buy some others not to fulfill whole, your whole demand but partially fulfill the demand so it's, it's more about the uh, how you sell the product rather than just mindlessly farming notes and that's why i like it more but yeah roster rabbit for sure the 
mega beast, okay? Mega beast of the of the cooking products you're gonna sell. You're gonna have other cooking products, uh, rich bear flying, you obviously get from bears. You have them in morning dale, I think is you have them in, in Brightwood, but I find that the morning dale is gonna be better also as mentioned before. In the bear case you have the provision crates and around here more provision crates. So you can get some extra value out of that farming. Pork belly is also easy to make. Maybe the most expensive thing is onion. Normally this you will do on demand because normally you want one stat buff, okay? To simplify things and just put it in the market because if you start thinking, okay, I have this intelligence focus, uh, intelligence and strength. It's gonna be very peculiar, very particular. Most people just want the constitution. They allocate the points they want in index or in strength or in intelligence or whatever. And then the leftovers is constitution. That's where they use the buff to simplify things. But these are okay. You can make some, put them in, in the market, see if they sell, see if they're not. Keep an eye on what you're selling, what you're not. If it expires the buy in order, you don't make more, obviously. If it is that sold, maybe you, just, you know, make double next time and see how it goes. This one, for example, is also demanded, but being the, the rabbit, so good for this roasted rabbit with veggies receipt. It's very hard for me, unless someone is really ordering me, like whispering me, hey, do you have this one? I'm not gonna make it and put it because this the rabbit is just way, way too demanded. And I'm losing money. If I'm making this, I'm losing money because I could be doing this with this one on this receipt, right? Using the same product on this receipt and making more money out of it. So it's a bit annoying to have these receipts. The Dex buff, really, really annoying, really hard to get. Albenaja is a legendary fish, super hard to get, not even worth. And then the alternative is the chili con armadillo. This chili con armadillo, free de Albenaja, all the tier 5, you need to either find them in provision crates, you can go to Brimstone Search to get them. Uh, you can find just by luck in the, in the provision chest in Brimstone Search. Doing elite runs around here, this is more around here, here, like almost in every area there's some provision and chest. Or alternatively, you can just buy them. I think it's a good investment. You need to, you know, kind of make this amount of money across these weeks to make up for the for the loss of buying the, the receipt. You need to value that. But yeah, they are high-end products. The chili con armadillo in particular, super expensive because of the fish sauce and the prior armadillo meat. How to get the prime armadillo meat? Well, I found some areas. Let me tell you how, how I do it. For armadillo meat, obviously we're gonna travel to Brimstone Sharks. There's three good areas I like visiting. First one is around here. I don't know if this is my favorite, but it's not the best. It's the one I started using, the first one I discovered. This thing has a lot of skin in general. You have the wolves here with some star metal, the big scorpions and the big lions. So in general for skin is pretty good. When you start finding armadillos around this altitude, they respawn fairly fast. So if you're doing something else like giving for OPR or whatever else, might be just worth staying here and continue until they respawn again. But I like this, if I'm just doing armadillo run, I like just keep switching. Because you know sometimes they, you kill them very very scalonated and the respawn is scalonated too, so it's not completely efficient. What you wanna do is just do them over and over again, right? For the next one, we'll travel to this uh, waypoint over here. You'll find the armadillos right as you jump from the travel point, all the way in this area down to where these stairs start uh, appearing. So there are some herbs in this area, like give you garlic, for example, and tarragon, so I, you can, you know, two for one, I guess. It's always in this game. I feel like every time I'm farming something, I, if I can 
farm something else in the meantime, like whatever it is. Might not be harvesting, might be getting reputation with a faction or getting tokens with a faction. Might as well do it. Maybe I'm doing a star metal, but I wanna kill some rabbits for uh, for meat, or I'm going fishing, but at the same time I wanna get some herbs. Always link the the gathering, even that you want to focus on one to have the buff and everything. You can do something else in, in between. You're gonna benefit from it. Be aware that in this area you have uh, armadillos in both sides of the road, so check the other side too, and go up to where in this area where the cacti start disappearing. There's still something here. And this is an area, the other one is more known. Still, I don't see a lot of people farming armadillo because it's relatively expensive. But while the previous area is more known, this is even less known. And there's never people here. The last area, probably, are probably the best in terms of armadillos. You are farming these armadillos while you're watching something as a second monitor without fully zooming. Maybe this is going to be the area for you. You have some armadillos over here, or even more around here, across the dunes. It's a bit annoying on the other side because you find uh, wolves and it, it's very easy to attack also, rather, but you know. And it's easy to, to aggro them. But you know, if you're not going full zoom in, my, maybe this is the area for you because it's like two areas in one and you can just go around clear everything, get some herbs, chill a little bit. And by the time you're done with the other area, you can come back and maybe somehow respond already. So, might be a consideration, this is the biggest area, it's like two in one and might be the best one. I just like the first one because it's where I started and I'm used to it. And also I like that, I also like that the first area, the concentration of uh, of armadillos are is pretty good and and you clear that very fast both sides of the row. But you know the best thing about farming armadillos in your world and making content, making a video about it on YouTube, is that I can pronounce properly this word since it's Spanish. Might be the only word I'm gonna pronounce properly on this video. So you know that's a victory for sure for the Spanish community. In case we cross this, this bridge. You're gonna go around, you know, the big area, but I like going down here. Just for parkour purposes. For style points. But, you know, might as well take the, the normal route. Also, this tends to be an armadillo down here, so this is what a normal start. Now, in this side, you're going to find all the armadillos across the dune, all up. It's convenient that you come from this area that is, like, under, so... You just see them all across the dunes. And you can make your way around the area, trying to avoid the enemies. All the way around this area until there. And then start over again, cross and go back to the to the beginning. Super efficient. You're just gonna need that extra lag from your equipment. Your clothing, your harvesting tool, your skinning tool, trophies, and obviously the buff food. In this area, try not to aggro as many enemies. Try not to aggro the, the chackals and the lions because it's very annoying. You, you want to do this fast. But you need tier 5 hide, I guess you can, or some meat. You can kill some chackals, so maybe some those lions are pretty good too. Promote meat and skin. Mm. 
the fish sauce. Okay, you're gonna need also the fishing gear. You're gonna need the fishing trophy. And the problem of the fish sauce, one of the problems is that only drops from sturgeons and paddlefish. Okay. So, and you need two of them to make one. Now, you're gonna, every time you make one fish sauce, more, most of the time you're gonna make two with the with all the buffs. And then delicate fish fillet, you can either farm it yourself or just buy it. Two to make one, but you 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 copy it, you get double with the buff. So it's like two, you get two mostly, right? So one, one. Right here. It's still very expensive. Just because it requires a lot of time to get this fish raw. So in that time you can just could be doing something else, like getting iron wood or getting oric. There's a big there's a big cost opportunity of getting this fish raw. That's why it's expensive, it's time you mess on it. That you could be investing something else to get more money. So that's the problem of it. So the problem about fish row is that it drops from sturgeon, but the fish, like it says, you go to there are three types of hotspots that you might know. They unlock as you progress in level, in fishing level. Like you're gonna need to have 200 fishing for this. So the first hotspot, the one star hotspot, is not worth it because it's not enough quality. You might get some that are too small. And it's not worth the time, honestly, in my opinion. Then you have the three star hotspots that you don't get too many legendary, too many crates. That is good for money, but and the legendary is good for, for example, trophies or to make some insta money, selling on the auction house right away. But you really want to just get this uh, fish row. I think the two star hotspots are the best, and because they only drop from sturgeon some paddle fish, you're gonna need to you need to find a specific hotspots okay so i have this route i hope it works for you as well as for me go to more then go across there's some rabbits here there's some herbs too you can get this here this hotspot super high in stadiums you go down you get this one you keep going down and go here get the fast travel fast travel here or fast travel there go to this hotspot you can run from this one across here and jump to this one this is a bit risk of drawing, but I've been doing without no problem. Now you wanna make before I will go to the also to the three star hotspot. I was there, but now I'm only farming two star hotspots. There is more hotspots where you can get this fish row. You have this one over here, and you can fast travel there, get this one, go down, go there. Then you have this one in Bristol Search, fast travel there, you jump. There is a, an actual chest in here that I I forgot to mention in the chest. The lead chest you can find across Princeton Sands, but there's one there. And then you jump and you have the, the red spot. But I feel like the same with the broccoli, for example, that you want to just do the best run broccoli, stop doing it, do something else, and come back and get more broccoli one hour later because it's just more efficient. I feel like going here, doing this one, teleporting, or going to do this one too and that one and then teleporting and go to once in rain water these two only i think it's more efficient okay i think even arguably just going to this one you go to this one you deplete it you're done you try to buy some fish raw cheap on the market you don't you move on you come back uh, one hour later two hours later and do it again because it's going to be more sufficient so chilling with armadillo it's been demanded it's a bit too expensive but I think it has a lot of potential and eventually it will make money. Also, the dex is what I need for my build. So even if I don't sell it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna farm it for myself too. Let's make some. So okay, let's see how the onion is also expensive. Corn is cheap. There's some ways you can get the corn. For example, the best way, honestly, it's a lot of farms across the the map. But you really wanna have like go farm a lot of corn. Just might as well go here. It's a provision chest here, as I've been saying, here and here. So you can just do one run, get the provision here, get the provision chest here. And all this is a farm of corn. So you gather everything, you get the other two provision chests, and you're probably going to be done. Okay, but alternatively, you can just buy it because it's, it's not going to be super expensive. So yeah, let's make some of this. And I need to go back to farming armadillo, as you can see. And I'm gonna make some rabbit because I think I should mention the best thing about cooking. 
compared to other crafting, other professions, okay? The best thing about cooking is this. Not the multiplier, the aptitude. I found that the aptitude with the smelting can be super good because you can get the smelting cloth pattern, right? But I found that for others, like skinning is okay, I guess it gives you some epic uh, materials, right? Same with uh, harvesting and whatnot. With furnishing is okay, it's good, but the investment is too high too. And with others, maybe fishing, for example, is super bad, right? You just get some baits, is what's the deal? With a uh, cooking though, the thing is with cooking, the aptitude is super worth it. You can get uh, fish raw, you can get other very expensive materials. You can get rabbit, I think. So I think for me, cooking is super good because of this, because the aptitude chests are super worth it. The rewards you get from aptitude are super worth it. And because it's not, as I mentioned before, it's more about playing the market than it is about farming mindlessly this node and this other node doing the route of Weirwood in in Brightwood and doing this Ori route in Borningdale or whatever and just farming over and over. No, it's more about, okay, I get this product, I get this other product, I move here, I buy this from Action House, I set up my order, I combine it, I cook it, I get multiple, okay, maybe with this amount of uh, products I got with a bonus. If I got a good bonus, maybe I can lower a bit more the prices, adapt to the market. I get clientele. I, I, I post the, my sales. I post on trade channel. Hey, make orders. It's going to be cheaper auction house. I get the clientele there. It's more about moving your product that is about farming it. Even if realistically it's just farming pro like it's gathering the, the ingredients. It's just like gathering wood and gathering ore, right? In practice, it's just going one place and you gather it. Because sometimes you need to get there. Sometimes it's fishing. Sometimes it's skinning. It's skinning. It feels more dynamic. It feels more diverse. And uh, I kind of enjoy it a lot. So, yeah. I hope you guys like cooking in your world. I really do so. And this has been my way of making money. My way of financing furnishing, engineering, armoring, getting the housing, getting the... The trophies, you know, making myself you need the resource and all that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any question asked in the comments, I will be glad to answer them and see you on the next one.